Frosty. Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm talking about the 2024 Super Bowl or Usher Bowl. Just kidding. A little bit about the Super Bowl is that the 49ers, 49ers and the Kansas City Chiefs played. The Chiefs won. Mm -hmm. You following? And they actually went into overtime. And the Super Bowl commercials is what, what I was here for. And the halftime performance is what I was here for. I was there for Usher. No shade, no shade to the teams, but I didn't care about nothing else but Usher. I feel as though that Usher was an excellent choice for the Super Bowl because of his popularity and resurgence in his career. His career was never dead, but it was quiet for a minute. But after the Vegas residency, it's just like, bam! Everybody just like, nah, Usher's one of them. He's one of them. Like, don't play with him. I think if, if I recall, I did a set list prediction. Let's see if I was right. I don't know if we talked about it, but y'all know that Usher is going to be performing at the 2024 Super Bowl this year. Now, I'm not a sports girly, but guess what? I am a music girly. And so I want to know, what do y'all think he is going to perform? This is how I think that the set list is going to go. He's not performing any R&B. Let's just get it out there. He might perform a medley of R&B. He might do a Let It Burn, a he might perform that so i think he's going to start with oh my gosh with will i am and it's going to be like a silhouette right and then he's going to be dancing and he's going to be on some roller skates right i think that he's also going to perform good kisser he's going to perform my boo a little bit it's going to be a medley of like the ballads and like the r&b songs but the big heavy hitters is going to be omg i i don't know if i don't mind would be a good i don't know what do y'all think usher's 2024 Super Bowl performance set list is gonna be like let me know. I gotta say that overall, I enjoyed the Super Bowl performances. Performances. I enjoyed Usher's Super Bowl performance. I feel as though um, it, it kind of felt a little rushed, but I had to understand that he had only 15 minutes, so he did 13 minutes. So he had to fit in all like about 12 songs into that time period. So he had time period. He had, yeah, he had to he had to put he had to carefully do that. There was one part of the Super Bowl where Usher was singing My Boo with Alicia Keys and he got a little handsy. All I'ma say is Usher's never be in them boon that boondocks episode allegations, just saying. But prior to him um, getting hands with Alicia Keys. She did come out to If I Ain't Got You. I'm gonna say, as a collective, we knew Alicia Keys did not hit that note. Not eaten. Sorry. Then I realized that they went back and kind of doctored up her voice to make it sound better because it cracked when she started to sing. We were just like, uh-oh. But I still love Alicia Keys. She's very talented. Another surprise was her came out. Her came out and she played the guitar to Bad Girl with the infam infamous rip, uh, rift. <laughs> Full stop. So I'm editing and her did not come out to Bad Girl. She did the rift on You Got It Bad and she added her own rendition to it. My bad. I gotta say that I love her and I feel like this is just a great collaboration. It was sexy. It was hot. It was everything. That little leather suit she had on with her little boobs. I said, okay, her. You go, girl. Well, what have set it off for me was like, having a bad girl but it's just like there's not enough time for that so i understand and you don't want to have like her and the girl like you don't want them to overshadow each other but somebody was like oh beyonce should come out and then somebody was like nah victoria monet coco jump like they should he should just have every every one of them and i'm like in theory that sounds good but in 13 minutes we have to be like for real and we have to be realistic i gonna lie when usher's shirt came off i was like <laughs> i was like okay is 45 and fine he looks great he looks amazing body is amazing found out about usher and i was like i was a kid i was probably like what the, the highlight that i loved was the part where he was singing superstar right and he was like spotlight and then like the music stopped a little bit and then the spotlight came on him came on like came down on him and then it said big stage 50,000 fans screaming my name and then it panned to the 60,000 people that were in that arena, it was dope because it's like one, that's manifestation. And two, I, I can tell that the production team, the camera ops and Usher and their team and, and the creative director, they were all in sync. Like that was amazing. The cues were on point. That was amazing to see. I, I love that part. I think that part was like, it kind of gave me goosebumps in a way. 
it just just to see how the place was like just lit up. A lot of people did not want Usher to perform Oh My Gosh, but I'm sorry. Oh, I'm, oh My Gosh is like, oh my God. Like, that's my favorite song by Usher. That's one of my favorite songs. That part, baby, let me love you down. Like, that's the part. And he brought out Will I Am. I'm not gonna lie. I was like, is that Kanye West? And then, <laughs> and then it was like the Atlanta portion. And then they brought out Jermaine Dupri. Dupree. Jermaine Dupri had on the socks that you had on Sunday school. Green effort. <laughs> he bought that Atlanta party. You like, okay, you know, Luda and a uh, little John about to come out. So little John come out and little John do his little turn down for what? And then Luda come out or maybe it was opposite, but they both come out and Luda does his verse and yeah. And it was just so cool. And then at the part where they was like, do the A town stop. Do the hut stop. I do the, oh my gosh. That part just brought back big memories. Cause yeah, is such a big song. That's a song that everyone loves. Like that's every, if you meet a white guy, ask him what's his favorite Usher song. He's going to say it's yeah. When they brought, and it was, I forgot what song it was, but he had Kappa shimmy in and I was like, oh, that's so cool. Shout out to HBCUs. That's cool. And then he had an HBCU marching band and they kind of, um, lined up and like spelled his name Usher. It was so cool. It was like electric. And then when he had on that blue, and I feel like the outfit was paying homage to Michael Jackson because of the one sparkly glove. It was amazing. I loved it. I feel as though Usher was an amazing choice for this. He brought the energy. It was very lively. And then him doing the Vegas residency already. And then the Super Bowl being in Vegas is awesome. And then next year, the Super Bowl will be in New Orleans. And I'm just like, they got to get Lil Wayne. They got to get Wheezy on there. Because when Wheezy come out to a Millie, because everyone loves a Millie. Some of my concluding thoughts are, again, I feel as though Usher, even though his ticket prices are very expensive, I think he's worth it. He may bring out a special guest. He's going to serenade the audience. He's going to give you... He is going to give you a show. It's going to be set not, set design, production. It's going to be choreography. It's going to be outfit changes. It's well worth the... It, I think it's, he's well worth the money. And I'm definitely going to try my hardest to go. With the NFL Super Bowl halftime performance, I feel as though it's came a long way. I think that's thanks to Jay-Z. Jay-Z formed a partnership... Um, um, with his entertainment agency, Rock Nation, they actually have a partnership with the NFL. Jay-Z serves as the league's official live music and entertainment strategist. I feel as though that his leadership and vision offers some sort of longevity to the halftime show. Now, the halftime show has been a big thing for years. Like, it, it didn't get um presumably better with jay-z but i feel as though jay-z understands that look we ain't got that many superstars anyway so let's pace it we don't need to have four five seven different acts we may just need one a oh, one good one he had a meeting with the nfl like in 2019 and it was in this video and they kind of all sat down in a round table discussion and they and he talked about you know what could the NFL and the halftime show, how it could be better. Oh, me, I think sorry. the process of selection was fractured. But I think that, so, I'm gonna tell them what happened, okay? Yeah, right, for good, sure. Man. Yeah. Um, yeah, what was the so you would get, sorry guys, that's right. <laughs> so, you, so you see here, four artists right here. You take four artists and everyone thinks they're playing the Super Bowl and it's almost like this interview process. And I don't think that anyone, so I picked Chuck, other three people are a little upset. That's not even good math. <laughs> after, after three years, nine people are upset and three people play. There ain't that many superstars in the world. You're going to run out of people that want to play. And I just think the process could have been uh, it definitely could. a little bit more de uh, definite. This person is playing. If this person doesn't, uh, conflict is not the schedule doesn't align, then we move on to the next person. You pick someone, you speak to them, you let them have it, and then you move on. And I think that, uh, you know, and let the, the artist be the artist, you know. And Jay-Z, it was the one, he's the perfect person for this position because he has the ability to, one, be in the culture, and two, um, 
operate in business rooms. So he understands the culture. He understands what's going on. He under he has his fingers on the pulse. He knows the up and coming artists. He knows what the people like. He knows what the people are going to sell. He knows his audience. And he's kind of like that liaison between the big corporations who are not that in touch, but just know surface level things versus Jay-Z. He's that liaison. And I feel like, again, he's an amazing um, he's the perfect person for the position. Him choosing Usher was awesome. It was an awesome PR move because not only was it good for Usher, it was great for the NFL and music lovers all around. It brought us together because Usher has such a big audience. I think some critiques that I have was that, okay, he didn't necessarily sing live, but it's just like some people can't dance and sing live at the same time. He probably recorded like background vocals and I know we were expecting more, but at the end of the day, this is a halftime performance, not a Vegas residency show. If you want to see all of that, buy the tickets for the show. Anyways, and also I gotta say that Usher did this amazing... I think I love how he planned out his rollout to this because he knew that Beyonce was coming because Beyonce j just announced that she was dropping new music and she dropped new music, right? He did his tour, album, all that, and then did the performance. And then he's like, look, I know Beyonce coming, so let me just... Let me just drop everything. I feel as though artists are privy to who is coming out with what. So I feel like that was very strategic on his end, but very, very good on him so that he has his moment Everyone has their moment at the end of the day. Thank you all so much for watching this review of the 2024 Super Bowl. Let me know down below in the comments, what did you think of the Super Bowl? Did you like it? You know, did you pay attention to the game? Did you watch the Usher Bowl? Are you excited for Beyonce? Like, let me know your thoughts down below. And until next time, bye!